big part of inflation that I think people miss and they don't really think about critically enough is that it's hitting us in the reoccurring bills the most so the bill of food from the store for most everybody and when that's doubled that's a weekly expense an over and over and over again expense that never stops occurring as well as your bills at home when the rent goes up when the electric and the gas go up that's a reoccurring month after month after month you never get away from it because we're all for the most part slaves to it unless you break free of those systems by devising your own ways over here with the Muscovies the babies come up here because they don't go inside right now they don't go up the steps probably not until they get bigger will they figure it out like these adults but I throw them their layer feed through here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a feeder right here one that I can have access to from the outside and then be able to dump feed through for them to eat right here because they like to run up and down what they're doing right now and come over here so I'm gonna build that right there onto there it'll be an easy way to feed everybody outside who's in this run instead of having to pour it in through the chicken wire top it's kind of messy and then it hits them when it pours down they're really beautiful at this stage where they're juveniles and they're not fully grown but they're not quite little babies you really get to see their color scheme their patterns come in and watch them develop into either a male or a female a drake or a hen like that guy there is the drake you see how prehistoric and dinosauric they look and look at her she's the hen they got this red patch on their face like they're wearing a mask this one here is actually not a silver fox it's a Flemish giant crossed the giants are actually bigger than the average meat rabbit like maybe almost up to twice the size so this is gonna be a big one she's special she sits in here with all of the silver fox and she's still a juvenile so she's not even had her first set of kits yet and I'll know when she does I'll see the difference and I'll probably know perhaps when it's ready I could separate her and then just have them separate so they just don't get mixed up with the pure genetics of the silver fox rabbits in here and I can have that for meat production I want to have them as a meat source for me because they'll be bigger I could get a full Flemish giant full purebred this is one I found on uh, Facebook I found a lady and she was close and wanted to trade for one of the mini Rex I had and the mini Rex is a pet so it was going to be a pet breed project of mine but I didn't want to do that anymore because it's a lot of work to maintain them when it wasn't as lucrative or efficient for production of meat and sales would have been you know limited so instead I replaced it with a different breeding project for meat which will be a larger breed rabbit eliminate all of the expenses the bills because of inflation and they're just not needed gas I let that bill go months ago I don't need it I have a wood burning stove I have propane water heater when I need that and that's pretty much it I have propane stocked up so that I have that when I need it as a resource I have propane burners and even cookers like ovens and heaters a mr. heater 30,000 BTU thing for heat as a backup redundancy that's the gas that's not needed anymore my internet I use my neighbor Tom I'm in good with all my neighbors building good relationships with them so that I can well, work with them communicate and get tools and get help with things when I need it and things like using his internet so I come out here to get a better connection to do uploads and downloads and things 
but inside I get just enough connection to stream and do whatever I need to do there and it's really nice because I don't have that bill anymore so that bill's gone and then a vehicle so I don't have a vehicle right now I have it in a couple months when I need to go somewhere I get a ride with family so it's not often but like once a week everything in life you can pretty much get delivered to you same day with Amazon they have the Amazon Whole Foods to get food groceries you don't even got to go to a grocery store and you just pay a little extra which really kind of saves you money and time because of the price of gas now so with that there's also the Instacart where you can get all the box store stuff delivered right to you and I use that a bit now so I get deliveries delivered right to me and then business so the bug business I have I have boxes that gotta get shipped so they get picked up by United States Postal Service as long as they got the shipping label on them and you can get the boxes for free from United States Postal Service you can get your shipping boxes and then I do sales with the animals and eggs I got a buddy now who's gonna every week pick up seven dozen eggs he's on a raw diet and that's gonna be consistent five bucks a dozen so that's 35 bucks so I'm getting revenue being able to be at home in my element in my environment free from a nine to five and working on eliminating all the bills which is going to allow me to beat inflation food I pretty much grow my own so I don't spend much money at all on food and then that leaves electric which that bill is a bit and you can get away from that by getting solar by having backup generators just in case you can have that too so you know get a tri-fuel generator with which runs off propane natural gas and gasoline stock up on the gasoline and more importantly the propane tanks you know like you see at a gas station where they got them in a cage have that like at your house maybe you don't need the cage but just stacked with smaller you know barbecue grill size and those are tradable those are portable more accessible usable and then you can just refill them as you go through them for half the prices it costs to buy a new one you go to uh, the tractor supply it's a bit cheaper to buy their empty tanks and have them fill them there than it is to go to a gas station and buy them so there's that and then with electric I'm thinking things like I'm pretty radical and I'm thinking you know you get in good with your neighbors if things got really tough or if you could even devise a plan with them to do a trade-off I can run everything minimal where it's like an appliance or two's worth of energy at any given time I don't need to use that much in the winter maybe a little more for the grow lights but I could hook up switches and unplug and plug in to just use what I need at that time and I could work with a neighbor and run a cord and use their energy and eliminate that bill do something like that that's pretty extreme right but hey it could be done if you did something to work out a deal but you got to um, it could be detrimental to some degree if you don't have your relationships solid because <laughs> you they could unplug you <laughs> right? so there's that uh, so you can get rid of the energy bill too with means like that or simply just solar hook up your solar and have some backup parts just in case stuff breaks down and then you know the costs is a bit more but it is more sustainable so there's that bill taken care of and that leaves really you know you don't get the vehicle if you don't need it um, that leaves really just the rent and the taxes for wherever you're at which is the one you can't get away from right so that's why you, that's where you have to play into the fiat system and have some kind of revenue stream so if you're working from home you can avoid having to have a vehicle and make your money there and then you can produce produce and you're not spending all the money on inflated things like the reoccurring bills and the food so you're really saving and then you take care of your taxes real easy that's my thoughts on how to beat inflation <laughs> enjoy your life and value your time and enjoy your time and be on your time
my pallet fence, I'm adding another layer. I'm making it too tall. And this is just recycled pallet wood from anywhere I get it, from when I get totes or my neighbors have it. My neighbor even knows a spot where I could go pick a bunch up if I want more. I don't think I really need it right now. I have a wall running that way that I'm breaking down to use as one wall just covering the whole front strip and then that'll be open where my four compost piles are easier access to it and all as I expand on adjusting and maneuvering pieces I'm gonna fortify it with some boards and uh, maybe even put a board up in, on an angle on each section of the wall so that it really fortifies it from being pushed in and then at the top of it I'm gonna have strip of razor wire on the inside lip so you can't really see it from the outside but if hooligan tries to get in and uh, they're gonna slice their hands up at the top you should have no reason to be trying to climb my fence keep the zombies out they can just ram a truck through but that's extreme For those kind of measures it wouldn't matter at that point anyway what's it matter anyway for now I suppose but in a real event, walls like that, I ain't stopping up. It's been years since I've drank any store-bought, like, bottled anything in plastic. Not glass. The plastics, they leach the BPAs. And, uh, you know, that's the common one that a lot of people have heard of. What other plastic or uh, synthetic chemicals will leach from the plastic bottles? The BPAs are toxic. There's synthetic plastics, microplastics, all that. You drink that, gets into your body and your blood. Uh, very, very harmful stuff if you're drinking the plastic bottles. Even the ones that say BPA free, I still wouldn't trust that. If you don't filter your water and you just drink city water or you tap water, you're drinking all sorts of contaminants. Fluoride, arsenic, heavy metals microplastics, pharmaceuticals, herbicides, pesticides, bacteria, and viruses. You definitely want to use a Berkey, a Pro-Pure, something along that line to get your water clean. If we have some kind of major SHTF event, you're going to need those water filter systems. You're going to need replacement elements as well, the ceramic ones, in like an infinite amount you're gonna need as many as you can get they'll be worth more than gold people need water you go three days without water and then you're dead uh, you need water more than food see I got quite a few of these systems I've been building my own and I feel like that's not even enough you know I'm gonna be the community well house but realistically I would like the community to have one of their own, so they can leave me alone, but we'll see how realistic things get. But the idea is you should be filtering your water with them right now, regardless, and then have many backups for just in case. Clean these elements as well with vinegar, soaking them and using something to really clean the surface of the ceramic. You know, maybe after... 12 years a couple decades it might completely crust over but you can clean it use after use with the vinegar and have them ready to go again you don't have to throw it out after you see that it's gotten stained they last and last and last fast food i wouldn't even think about it it's been years since i've ate at a place like that or any restaurant at all completely home cooked meals or sometimes organic things from the store but Whole Foods is 98% of it very rarely will I buy something with an ingredients list clean water always from my own water filtration no bottled anythings in plastic from a store soft drinks from a fast food their plastic cups their water that they mix with their syrup that syrup god only knows the water from the city fluoride and 
chlorine, and what else? Store bought even water bottles. And all that stuff, a lot of it sits in a warehouse and cooks in the heat, leaches all of that toxic material into your water or whatever drink you're drinking. You want to be healthy. You want to do it 100% of the time. Don't be like everybody else. Don't be half-assed doing it 50%, 60 80%. You do it 100% conviction, and it seems extreme, right? You might think, oh, crazy, dude. Three years without fast food, completely organic diet, only drinking my own clean water always? Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> You've been outside lately? You've been, <laughs> you looked at people? They're all staring at the floor with their head buried in the dirt, like staring at their phones, uh, disconnected from our real world reality this is the video game guys level up i'm beginning to water glass eggs so there's a few different ways to store eggs that i learned and one of them is freezing them so in my freezer here there are eggs that i froze and they're in little cups like uh, cupcake cups these are silicone ones they peel easily and you can freeze them and they last i don't know a year or two whatever a freeze they will last and you can store them up this way take them out of here put them in a bag and store them that's what i'm going to do with some of them the others i'm going to water glass like i have in here is a water glassed jar of some eggs that i missed my first water glassing test for eggs so i'm going to hold on to that for a little while and then check on them crack one and see how fresh they are maybe in a few months or something what I'm about to do is use these small containers and store maybe six or eight or ten however many will fit in them and they will be like little packs of water glassed eggs for barter as uh, well to use but just in case you need to barter some eggs that you've stored up you could have them in these little containers and you'll have multiple of them it'll be easier as a trade item and I have questions as far as water glassing that I haven't got answered yet so like if you mix up the solution and you drop some eggs in there and you continuously add eggs to it over time which I've heard you can do if you put them in a bucket and the bucket's not full because you don't have enough to fill it at first so you add over time but the solution it settles and that hydrated lime all settles to the bottom and then the water above it isn't stirred and mixed with the lime so my question is is it still okay to say a week or two later after you've already added eggs and that lime has settled to keep adding eggs and keep adding eggs as you know a month goes by or two months goes by because that hydrated lime has already settled will the solution be concentrated enough still to protect the eggs as you add them over time that's one of my big questions so I figure if I just make these little packs each time that I go to water glass eggs then it will be a freshly mixed solution every time you want to prepare for both worlds when you wake up one day and it all changes like a bad dream okay well that's what we prepare for but also we want to continue to live our life and grow and build and expand on our businesses and continue to be normal <laughs> so you have the contingency of both worlds and that's a big thing to really grasp in the prepping realm is that it's not just about spending all your energy and putting that into preparing for the grid down for the SHTF and not focusing on your future if there isn't an SHTF. Say the grid stays up forever and we're all good and live happily ever after. You want to be able to continue to exist in that fiat realm and create and produce to bring in revenue and money to live successfully. So there's both worlds. There's the SHTF and then there's the fiat construct. So you want to be successful in both. I have a bug business where I work like two days a week with roaches and isopods. Maybe like four hours 
each day, so eight hours total, and then I'm done for the week, and I get to move on to other things, and my projects, and all of my passions, and hobbies, and all that. One of them, they're getting ready to be picked up by the post office. They do pickups, so I can work entirely from home. I don't even got to leave my house ever. I get, get deliveries of anything I need, and really, I don't really leave much at all. So it's great. And here you see these are the bugs in their cups, roaches and isopod. Some more cups here. People collect and also use the bugs as feeders for the reptiles. And uh, some people like to try to catch them all. Uh, with the isopods especially, they come in all sorts of different color patterns. And they've got cool names like dairy cow or panda or rubber duckies. And then the roaches too. I don't so much do as many species of roaches as I used to. Just a couple different. But uh, the isopods are more fun. And they're more collectible. And they're a high value, really. Check out the link I have. You can see my eBay page where I do a lot of sales. And you can check it out there. But yeah, start yourself a business so you can work for yourself. And that's the way you truly get free. A beautiful thing about the bugs is that it's a farming thing and feeding them things that I grow I get to produce prolific amounts in abundance and then that creates that many more that I can just sell for revenue and if I put a lot of energy into it I can produce a ton of them and that ups my production and ups the numbers and then I get more sales and then I can offer better prices and more amounts I can offer the best value in the market got a good amount of seed potato here now there is actual real potato seeds true potato seed you might say it's the berry it's the potato berry that grows on some potato plants and you get it when it's green and you gotta get the seeds you cut it open it's like a little tomato inside and you gotta ferment the seeds to get those seeds to save and you can plant them and plant the plant from real seed versus